Hospital of Porter's Pride and Dignity Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Panwo TV. Well, got a little short video for you uh, today. It's actually an off-topic video. It's uh, not the usual stuff, the um, paranormal UFOs, conspiracy theory stuff. Anyway, I'm not a conspiracy theorist anymore. I used to be, but then I realised that's what they wanted me to think. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is going to be about something a little bit different, um, not my usual material, and it's another of these little mini book reviews that I've been doing. Um, I haven't done one for a while. I think the last one I did was uh, The City and the City by China Miaville. I'm going to do another one in a similar vein, only this time I'm going to be re reviewing this book, The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Steen. It's... Um, a book that was given to me actually by a client. She just read it and she thought I might like it. And um, it's um, <coughs> it's a kind of a family drama, and not the, not the sort of thing I normally read. And I didn't really think it would be my cup of tea when I saw what it was about. But I started reading it and I became hooked on it. I became gripped upon it. It's it's a family drama about um, a turmoil that a, a man goes to a man called Denny, who's a uh, one of the he's the main character one of the main characters and he is um he's a man who is a racing driver but he's only semi successful so he sort of does odd jobs he works as a mechanic in between that and um he marries he falls in love get, gets married ends up having a a child a little girl and then he goes through an awful situation i don't want, i don't want to put too many spoilers in but i will do i will put a couple in I'm sorry about that. I hope they won't ruin your actually reading the book. But um, this is an all too common situation. It really struck a chord with me because it has sort of it's happened to me a little bit. What happened was his wife dies and his his in-laws, his former in-laws, his wife's parents, then try to take the child away from him. It's an awful situation. It's all too common. I mean, this is, he describes it in the book. He says, um, he says, you know, the grandparents, you know, they feel they messed up being parents. They want to have a second chance, so they try to steal their own grandchildren. And this, this is a common occurrence: parents trying to use the law to steal their own grandchildren, especially if they're, if one, if usually it's the un, it's the in-law they go for. If, for example, the um, their child dies. Their, their son or daughter dies, they tend to attack the in-law and try to take the child away from them. But I, I've known parents, and in fact, I've known, saying I've known parents, my own parents did this. I, I don't want to say too much about this, actually, because it's still something. I, did, I have mentioned it in previous videos a bit, but um, my own mother tried to do this to me, tried to take my daughter away. Now, she didn't succeed. The only, the only it, was, it was basically the Grim Reaper that, uh, that stopped her. She died before she had the chance to complete her mission. But um, maybe I'll say, I'll, I'll maybe probably do a video talking about that in detail, but she, she did actually have a plan to take my child away from me. Um, and she... Oh, I, I don't want to go into details about that now, but it was an extremely painful situation for me. It's one of the reasons why I had the feelings I did when my mum died. That's, you know, I've talked about this before. I didn't feel any grief for her. I felt nothing but relief and happiness, it's got to be said. Now, what makes The Art of Racing in the Rain an unusual, in terms of a family drama, what makes it so unusual is the, the main, the central character, that is the first person protagonist and narrator of the story, is the family dog. Yeah, and Denny has a dog called Enzo. He named him after Enzo Ferrari, who the who created the motoring company, and um, so he is a little, a little Enzo. Is this? Um, I think he describes himself as a cross beagle, and um, what is he? He he, he describes himself as a what is it? He's a cross beagle. He's a sort of mongrel, about two or three different breeds. But he's you see a picture of Enzo there. That's what he looks like, and um, he's it's it's very. He's, a, he's an anthropomorphic dog, essentially, internally. He, I mean, he's, it's not like Tarka the Otter. I don't know if you've ever read Tarka the Otter, which is a, it's a beautiful story about an otter, but the otter is not in any way any different from any other otter. It's kind of a... He, he, he's the narrator. The otter's not a narrator or protagonist in any way. It's just everything's told through a third-person narrator, but the otter is simply just doesn't act any or think thoughts or does actions that a normal otter wouldn't do. So it's not like Wind in the Willows. 
Pataka, the otter, is a lovely story. This is very different. Enzo is a very intelligent jog. In fact, he he's, he's, a lot of reincarnation comes in this because he says that he has been he's been reincarnated as a dog for many, many generations. But it's his soul's ambition is to be incarnated as a human, and he believes this is his last. He's very intelligent. Like I said, he can understand human speech, and um, completely and obviously he can't speak he often complains He's, he often thinks to himself no I, I wish i could speak my, my mouth my tongue is too floppy and loose these humans they just have such wonderfully strong and 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 you know agile mouths i wish dog i wish dogs could have that i wish i had lips and a tongue like a human but um it's interesting because there, there's stories we're talking animals such as the chronicles of narnia you know there, there's talking lions and horses and beavers and things and of course Animals like that couldn't talk, even if they had the brain to do so. They had this, the speech abilities that humans have. They couldn't, they couldn't speak. They could understand, but they couldn't speak because, you know, it's not just your brain that allows you to speak. It's a particular kind of throat. It's your mouth. It's your tongue, teeth, things like that. that humans have. That's that, that gives us the power of speech. Now, um, it's interesting about dogs because I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, "You've got to be careful what you say in front of a dog." It's true, you know. It's it's a well-known fact, actually. It's not it's not contentious to say that dogs can understand a certain amount of human speech. I mean, you they know their names, you know. They know they often learn other people's names. They know things like walkies, sit, you know, things like that. They know these words, but they also they also pick up words. You don't necessarily have to teach them. They pick up words themselves without necessarily being taught them. You know, things. Um, I think there was one dog that. They did an experiment on him, and he found he had he had a vocabulary of over 400 words that he could understand words words and phrases. He could actually understand over 400 words and phrases in human language, but of course, he couldn't reply. He couldn't speak himself. But you know, he learned all kinds of amazing things that he would because they, they do dogs. They watch us and they listen, and they know things. I mean, I was with a dog once and. And um, this is just, obviously this is a normal dog, and um, one of the ones I walk, I do it as a job. And um, he picked up a ball and he was carrying it with him, and I thought oh, he's going to drag that all the way home, and he's going to leave it in some inconvenient place, and I'm going to have to pick it up. And eventually, like he put it down, and he went and smelled something. And, and dogs are very single-minded, you know, they're easily distracted, they're like children. And so we carried on walking, and I, and I said to this this person I was with, because I was walking the dog with another person, I said, "Thank God, he seems to have forgotten about the ball." The dog turned and looked at me, and I ran back and grabbed the ball. <laughs> he understood what I said. He, he, since I reminded him about the ball, he obviously understood the word ball, and maybe some of the other words in that sentence. So Enzo, but Enzo is like really a a dog who can, who's essentially a human in a dog's body. And um, <laughs> he, he said it's really quite funny in certain cases. And this has just been made into a movie, actually. It's a film. I've not seen the film. But uh, he uh, he watches TV and he says he says my favourite actor is Peter Falk. He says I love Columbo and things like that. And I wish I wish I could. He say, again he says I wish I wish I could use the remote control, but I got pause. And I love I love watching the motor racing because Denny watches motor racing all the time, and I I watch it. And he's he, he's a big motor racing fan. He says yeah my best. The dog is sitting there thinking, you know, best racing car in the world is the Alfa Romeo. Absolutely fantastic, you know. And he, he goes on and he knows it all about that. And um, it, it gets very sad, as I said, because the, the wife, Denny's wife, gets sick and she dies. And she goes and lives with her parents. And the thing is, it's a fatal, it's a fatal thing which the parents use against him. They... Denny, Denny went and carried on living in his own home while his wife was living with her parents and the little girl, Zoe, the little kid. I think that's was that her, is that her name? So it's a while ago I read this. I'm just sort of I was going to make this uh, video a while ago, but um, where is it? Um, yeah, it's, I think her name's Zoe. Little girl, yeah. Yeah, Zoe. And um, she goes and lives with them. Of course, the, then the parents are kind of acting as surrogate parents while Danny's working. He's working as a mechanic. He can't get, like, a seat on the grid at any race. He was, I say he's a, he, he becomes a very successful racing driver in the end, but he starts off as a sort of part-time racing driver. And um, 
so they um i think that's what gives the parents the idea you know that they when the lady dies they get the idea of taking custody permanent custody of the child because denny's now a single father and we all know what happens to well fathers generally in this world are looked down upon thanks to feminism but a single father is just like I mean I know this from personal experience this is why I actually I I sense this was happening with my 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 own mother was trying to do this to my daughter this is why I did put my I stepped in at a certain point because I knew that she was trying to take over as my daughter's mother she even said at one point you know I could make such a good surrogate mother and she she hated uh, my ex partner my ex partner my daughter's mother and she tr and she was always trying to slag off her off and in the end she turned on me as well and attacked me too so it's it's, it's very important that if you have grandpa if you have parents if you are a father or a mother and you have parents or in parents in law you need to be very wary of their relationship with your child if you have a child um <clears throat> and that's this is just not to be nasty or you shouldn't be sus necessarily suspicious of them but they can grandparents can turn nasty when they have grandchildren against the parents it does happen and it happens in this book and it happened to me um they it's horrible what they do actually because there's an awful situation where um denny is accused of basically raping an underage girl committing statute raping it with a with an underage girl and it's like they then take advantage of that you know they play on it and they they co-opt this young girl into their scheme oh it's horrible what they do i mean my mother never did anything as bad as that I, whether she would or not i don't know um she didn't live long enough luckily but if she had if she'd lived longer i do wonder what length she would have gone to i really do um and what's <laughs> It's it's great though because like Enzo is stays Enzo like despises them for what they've done and there's just some really funny scenes because he talks about his like doggy things you know like he talks about food he eats he, he's got a good sense of smell so he you know at one point his Denny tries to feed him a chicken burger and he smells it and he thought that's gone off and he wouldn't touch it things like that of course dogs because he describes it's very interesting that he describes this really even though this is a dog that's internally human. Enzo does still have a doggy nature, of course. He has doggy senses, and because he has a dog sense of smell, which is far superior to, all, I think, almost any other creature in the world, certainly humans. And he, he, at one point, he says, "Oh, if only humans could smell like us. God knows they would know what people were thinking. They would know all sorts of things if only they could smell like us." These poor humans. Oh dear. I suppose I'll have to get used to that if I'm ever reincarnated as a human. Oh dear. But then he, um, so he can like, sm if he thinks someone's bad, he can smell them. You also know dogs, dogs seem to, I'd say they seem to be a good judge of people's characters. For example, there's certain dogs, if a dog will warm to someone particularly and, and be nice to them and seem to like them, but then there's other people and they'll growl at them like that. It's probably because your, your thoughts are given away by pheromones that you, release from your body because what your brain like causes changes in your body of course thoughts do alter the body in various different ways there's very obvious examples such as the the fight or flight response or sexual arousal but that's just the most obvious examples your thoughts alter your body in other ways as well and um some ways for example is that you give off pheromones and that's sm substances which are so have a smell which is so low it's virtually subliminal for humans but dogs can pick it up which is why if a dog growls at someone you should be aware of that person because it could be they have unpleasant intentions towards you and indeed Enzo despises Denny's in-laws for what they do the, gr the grandmother and the grandfather of Zoe <laughs> At one point, he overhears them, and they sort of—it's horrible, actually. They're sitting there thinking, and they're saying, you know, people, because they're sort of—they know deep down that Denny actually didn't commit this crime, and it's a horrific crime. Like I say, he, if he was found guilty, he'd go on the sex offenders register. He might face jail. He would um, 
he'd certainly lose custody, the custody case with his daughter, and they're using this. Oh, come on, you know. We, of course, he doesn't. He didn't do that, but you know, we got to pretend. Let's let's just keep saying so. So that let's keep saying he did it. So the grandparents are essentially admitting they know he didn't do it, but they're going to say they're going to say it anyway because it helps their case. So they know they're accusing him an innocent man of a crime, really deep down, and they they admit it to each other one day when they're just talking. And Enzo overhears this, and what he does is he goes and eats a because this happened to him before accidentally. He does it on purpose this time. He goes and eats a whole bag of chilies. And he ends up having diarrhoea all over their floor. And he does it deliberately to get back at them for being so horrible. <laughs> it's the only way he can. It's it's great. And, uh, oh, and um, it's a wonderful story. Um, it's, it describes here captivating and moving the extraordinary life of a family, how they almost fell apart and how they were brought back together by the wisest and loyal uh, member. Enzo the dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's... <laughs> it's moving actually it's it's making me move just to think of it because oh because I mean you know it's gonna you know how it's gonna end because in the prologue he talks about how he's very sick and um he's sitting there and he's really ill and uh he, he phones he, he goes and he phones the vet um he's, he's he's when he gets someone to try and look after his kid he says Mike Mike is Denny's friend yeah he says this is good um this is this is the the book. I'll just read this little chapter, this little segment here. Ah, uh, there's my Enzo, says Denny. We leave the apartment. The night is sharp, cool, and breezy and clear, and we go down the block and back because my hips hurt so much. And Denny sees, Denny knows. When we get back, he gives me my bedtime cookies, and I curl up on my bed on the floor next to his. He picks up the phone and dials. Mike, he says. Mike is Denny's friend from the shop where they both work behind the counter. Customer relations, they call it. Mike's a little guy with friendly hands that are pink and always washed, wash, always washed and, and uh, always, always washed clean of smell. Mike, can you cover for, for me tomorrow? I have to take Enzo to the vet again. We've been going to the vet a lot recently to get different medis medicines that are supposed to help make me more comfortable, but they don't really. And since they don't, and consider all that went on yesterday. I've set the master plan in motion. Denny stops talking for a minute, and when he starts again, his voice doesn't sound like his voice. It's rough, like when he has a cold or allergies. I don't know, he says. I'm not sure it's a round-trip visit. I may not be able to form words, but I understand them, and I'm surprised by what he said, even though I set it up for a moment. I'm surprised my plan is working. It is the best thing for all involved, I know. It's the right thing for Denny to do. He's done so much for me my whole life. I owe him the gift of setting him free, letting him ascend. We had a good run. It's now over. What's wrong with that? I close my eyes and listen vaguely in a half-sleep as he does the things he does before he sleeps each night, brushing and squirting and splashing. So many things, people and their rituals, they cling so hard sometimes. And... <laughs> He goes on to say how he how he was born. He talks about his back garden. He says, "I never knew my father, uh, but they." Oh, he says I was a shepherd poodle mix. I don't believe it. I never saw a dog that looked like them on the farm. And um, he picked me out of a pile of puppies, a tangling. This is when Denny chooses him, rolling mass of paws, ears, and tails. <laughs> and um, yeah, because of course, it, it's it's revealed at the beginning that he's going to die. He's an old dog, and he's going to die. But he wants to be. Re he believes he's going to be reincarnated as a human. As I said, he's internally a human, and so um, it, at the end, Denny meets this young boy, and it's like it, I don't want to spoil. I hate putting these spoilers in, but I won't tell you too much. But the ins it's ins it's not revealed, but it is insinuated because they seem to they have that kind of instant bond and this instant sort of recognition. I have had this myself with people. I meet someone, I think, don't I know you? We haven't met before. And um, it's because it's it's to do with past life memories, and um, and um, it's 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 to do with past life memories, and, I, and this has happened to me when I meet somebody. I think I know you from somewhere, don't I? And it's it is it is because it could be because I've, I've met them before in a past life. Please do watch the film Cloud Atlas. I've I've done an entire review of it on her Panmo, on the main Hapanmo site. Because this happens. Because if you if you haven't seen it before, Cloud Atlas is a film about reincarnation. 
it's a film about a group of individuals who basically live numerous lifetimes together over a period of about 500 years. It starts in the in the 19th century, and um, then there's, there's about six different segments to the story, and then it moves forward to I think 1930s and the present day. And there's two futuristic scenarios as well, and these different people they keep coming back to it. They keep coming back to Earth at the same time. They reincarnate to each other. And they, they interact with each other in different ways. And it's interesting because in some lifetimes they're really bad and in some they're really good. But they all interact with each other. And, um, but they, they seem to have a... Look, they, there's certain things that bond them. For example, a birthmark. They have a birthmark shaped like a, like a star, like a shooting star. And each one of them has it on their head or their shoulder or something like that. And they... And they sort of know each other, but they also know each other anyway. They have that kind of feeling. And there's this amazing scene where um, one of the characters, played by Tom Hanks, is is a, in a present day scene. He's just at a party with some friends. He looks over, and he just sees a woman there, played by Halle Berry. And she sort of looks at him vaguely, and he, he sort of gives her a look like that, as if to say, "Again, he's saying, he's, I don't, I've seen her before somewhere." But of course, he hasn't. So I can't bear. He hasn't. But then he has because in the previous lifetime they knew each other very well. And so that happens in the art of racing in the rain. That Denny meets up with this young boy and thinks, "I know you from somewhere, don't you?" And I look, he looks up and says, "Yeah, you look. I know you too." And it's insinuated that the little, the little boy is, is Enzo. Of course, he's got a different name. He's, he's a human, but he's come back as a human. He's. I, I, don't, I won't read. I won't read from it. I won't read. From it. I don't want to spoil it for me. But um. Oh, it's so. Uh, it's amazing. It's an amazing moment. It's an amazing book because Enzo, if it's true, then Enzo's had his wish. He's he's developed his human soul during numerous incarnations as, as a dog, and now finally he's incarnated into a human body. Makes you wonder what I'll come back as, or you you will come back as. It gets you thinking, doesn't it? So, uh, well, that's the, the do get a copy. The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Steen. There's the spine there, and there's the back. There we, there we are. See, it's published by Harper Collins, 2008. It, it's um, it's now a film. So if I get, maybe I'll get the chance to see the film sometime and I'll let you know what that's like. So thank you for watching this little mini book review of this book. Um, see you again soon for the next video. Hospital Porters, Pride and Dignity, stop the New World Order.